All right, we have a little update for the Saber Liner today. I've got the uh, got my input output system reworked, and I'm just starting to get all the electrical system put together. So I have a quick video of um, just want to show you the software I have running for the electrical systems. This is just some debugging information I put out for the engines. You can see I've got our uh, throttle position for each lever, uh, throttle cutoff status, and the engine master switch status. And I've got a little progress thing here to show that the program's running. And you can see in the background I've got X-Plane. I actually have just a, a pretty basic Learjet 35 model that I'm using just for now. So I'll have something to run with. And then I wanted, what I really wanted to show was down here. This is my I.O. box, which has got um, input output for uh, all the switches I have interfaced so far. This is kind of a temporary deal here. I had an issue with the wiring going out through my data connectors. So I got my 28 volts and one of my tachometer leads coming out here just for now. I want to make sure there's no problems with the uh, with interference, with EMI, or anything like that. So if this system works and is stable, then I'll uh, reconfigure my connectors a little bit and get rid of these wires here. But other than that, this box is pretty much done now. It uses an ISA backplane and built-in power supply, of course, a network switch here. All these are network enabled. Let's go into the cockpit now. We're going to start the engines. And by the way, my awesome wife, Ruthie, is helping with the video. So let's climb the board here. Okay. We'll just do an abbreviated checklist. We have a checklist here. So the first thing we do is set our parking brake, which I can't set because it doesn't lock, so I won't worry about that. Uh, let's go ahead and get power to our cockpit. We're going to put electrical master on up here. And battery master on the right here. Alright, we're showing 28 volts. And we've got some lights. Um, let me just run through the startup procedure real quick. The way this airplane works, uh, there's two 24 volt batteries which are normally in parallel. And when the start button is engaged, those batteries go into series mode, so they, they theoretically give you up to 48 volts. And those are used to start the engine. Um, obviously that's going to kill, kill power to the cockpit. The, when you actually engage the starter of the voltage, according to the PTM, uh, voltage gets pulled down to about 12 volts and then builds up from there as RPM comes up. So what's going to happen is a few things. I'm going to turn the master switches on for the engines. I'm going to hit the start button for number two. When I get uh, some activity on my tachometer here, I'll bring the first throttle out of idle cutoff. And then we'll get a light. Uh, once we hit 35%, the start button will actually... Uh, this The start button holds itself down automatically. It's a hold down feature. Uh, as soon as we hit 35%, the button will pop back out. We'll get power back to the cockpit. Uh, the engine, the second engine start is supposed to work a little differently, but I don't have all that done yet. So we're going to see when I start engine number one, the cockpit's going to shut off again, which is not really what's supposed to happen, but that's what we have for now. Um, I haven't got generators working yet, but that's the next project. We're just going to do the basic startup. So let's go ahead and unlock our controls here. There we go. Alright, we're going to start looking at our checklist now. We need uh, engine master switches both on, and we're going to hit the, we start with the number two engine first. Again, the power button will, or the start button will hold itself down automatically until the engine hits 35%, then it will pop out. At that point, we'll get power back to our cockpit. Let's go ahead and get it going here. Watch our tachometer. There goes our power. There we go, activity on our tachometer here. There's our power back at 35%. It's still a little glitchy. I need to have some more work to do. So we're showing about 46% power. See, we've got response on our throttle here. We'll go ahead and start number two. Again, it's going to cut power to the cockpit. That shouldn't happen. I just haven't got that far in the in my code yet. So. Power 
car back. All right, we've got both engines alive. And we've got throttle response for number one. Now something else that's working is pretty cool. We have a synchroscope over here. I actually haven't done anything to that instrument. What happened is when I, I'm simulating the tack signals that go to each tachometer, and once I sent the right signals here, this started working. Now it's not perfect, it's kind of, it jumps around a little bit, but it, I'll bring up the throttles up here and I'll split the throttles a little bit so you'll see that um, the synchroscope does actually respond. Let's bring our power up. Alright, we're showing about 70% for, for engine. I'm going to pull the right power just a little bit. And you'll see our synchroscope is spinning to the left. There it was for a moment there. There we go. It's not perfect, but it's pretty cool considering I didn't have to do anything to it. So we got power up here. There's full power. Power very precisely. Here. Let's say I want uh, say I want 85 percent. So I'll bring the power up about where I think it should be. We're showing about 82. So let's do it a little more. There's 85 right there on the dot. Do a shutdown, so we're going to put our uh, throttle lock buttons. Pull back to idle cutoff. There goes our tax. All right, engine master switch is off, and battery master off, and electrical master off. That's all for now.